So this has got to be the dumbest RimWorld playthrough I've ever done. I don't know why I allowed myself to record and edit up to 25 minutes of footage, but I'm just gonna scrap it all because this is literally all we've been doing. Basically just buying animals and rocket launchers from orbital traders. Okay, we're aiming like in the back over here. There's no way he misses that badly again, right? I think he must have hit a rock or something, some kind of chunk, but yeah, that was a better hit. Yeah, use your AOE caster ability on yourselves. Very nice. We have like four Doomsday rocket launchers, I think. Oh, they open this. It's Tome up. That's a triple rocket launcher. And we hit mainly our own animals with that. And yeah, we're gonna have Morden come in here with the Doomsday. And we're gonna try to plant it maybe on their mortars in the back over here. Uh, yeah, he hit a rock chunk again. But yeah, I don't think Morning can take damage. But I mean, to be fair, like, we have animals as cover. Like, we're pretty okay. Hit the explosive. Nice, it did. And okay, these guys are running. So now the fun part begins. We get a look over their traits. So after the raid, I was calling in a few exotic goods traders. We'll get into why in a second. We now find ourselves in a bit of a conundrum. So this Arcotech Obliterator item is 16.5k. It's an improved version of the Arcotech arm. It has 170% efficiency. Okay. 12% armor pen. That's a little bit low. But then I think the mod creator added an extra zero here on accident. And if we do give this to one of our melee characters, it doesn't necessarily mean that we win no matter what because they can still get killed by ranged attacks. I'm thinking maybe since this item has such low armor pen and like the damage actually is not that high, 8.2 damage only, but then it's 0.01 seconds per attack. So it's attacking 100 times in a second. So the reason why we're doing that raid on the querying settlement is I want another querying that can do research full time. There's a few texts I want to get done and we're actually on day 30 now. That being said though, I do kind of want to wait till we get raided again. It's going to be pretty soon because our last raid was on day 20. And we get raided on average like every two to three days. So the next raid's coming within the next day or so. Instead of picking up another Quarian, we could just make Tali even more beastly. And this exotic good trader had two of these endgame Arcotech brain implants. So Tali, the person I'm thinking of installing one of these implants into, got pretty beastly in this clip. We captured these guys from one of the raids we got in the past seven days of, yeah, it was the deleted footage. We also got Ardead, who is physically adept. I think we're just going to sell both those guys off, but I'm not sure what to do with Zerkaz because the dude has Mercury's Blessing, which increases global work speed by 200% and then he's also workaholic which it doesn't seem like that actually helps like it doesn't say it is boosting any speeds it just says they will continue to work even sacrificing their health or sleep and like enduring doesn't really seem to help too much or master trader so yeah we could yoink out mercury's blessing from him and give it to morden but then morden would have seven traits and i'm not sure we could turn him into a caster at that point i don't think there's a hard cap on traits at seven i think it just can remove them if you go above seven using the orb of souls so we suck out zerkaz's traits give them to Morden right now, then give him the gem to turn him into a caster, then we probably could get away with giving him eight traits. But I feel like we should be really greedy here and hold out till we find someone that's like Mercury's Blessing and Deadshot maybe. So yeah, I think we're just going to sell all these guys. Or what we could actually do is suck out Zerkaz's traits and give that stuff over to Tali and that would make her really good at research. The Master Trader trait would also help Tali as well because she'd get 40% extra trade price improvement. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to suck out that dude's soul, unfortunately for him. I mean, his soul will be infused with Tali and that's that can't be too bad. And yeah, RIP that guy. I've never seen this fail out of like the four times I've done it. So yeah, I don't think it has a fail chance. And yeah, we've absorbed all those traits. And she's about to have a bunch more traits. This should work. And yeah, she got all of them because it didn't push it over the seven cap. So I wasn't worried that any of her traits would have been randomly replaced. And yeah, that's freaking epic, actually. Like all four of those traits might help. Like even Workaholic might help her do research better. And then Enduring lowers her mental break threshold. I mean, she's just not making use of the armor provided by Mercury's Blessing. And like her market value did go up, but it's not that high. These Quarians don't have that high of a base market value, I guess. So yeah, Tali just got really good. Let's see what kind of prices we can get now. I believe there is a cap to trade price. Oh, she's quick. And yeah, she's at 41% trade price improvement. I think that's the cap. But yeah, so at this point, Tali has 41% increased trade price improvement. We're getting so much profit from just cranking out dusters. And part of me is just telling myself, the ends justify the means. Like we gotta defeat Void when they eventually do raid us on day 50. And like, I do think we will be ready. It's just that the grind, at least up to this point, has just, well, not been that interesting. In future playthroughs, I will just not be using the Orbital Trader mod where you can call on orbital traders whenever you want. Anyway, so that's enough of me crying and we're back to this exotic goods trader who had two of these godly brain implants. The Arcotech membrane that we all know Morden has, which increases the general labor speed by 1000% and increases the efficiency of his brain by 200. That's not going to help Tali do research as much as this brain melder, which increases efficiency by 300%, increases rest rate as well, and increases medical potency. So her medical skills are going to be better and she is our medic. And it makes her learn quicker. Not that it really matters. Her skills are pretty much maxed. But yeah, that all being said, increasing 
boosting her consciousness to 400% is going to make her research really fast. It is 20,000 that's just going to be added to our wealth and we might be able to remove it from her later once we're done with the main text that we need to research. We do need to research quite a few though. Buying this thing is going to be the easy part. Now we got to just call in slave ships until we can find someone that has decent medical. I finally found someone. This Drell for 4,700 has Emotep's Wisdom which increases surgery success chance by quite a lot and 11 medical. Okay so what we're about to do to Tali may seem a bit excessive. I ended up actually installing a few more bionic mods mainly because the one I was using it's this one expanded prosthetics and organ engineering. The implants with this mod are really good but there's a 1% chance that the surgery can fail and if the surgery does fail there's a 1% chance that the person will die. I don't know what the chances are of both those events happening the 1% chance of fail and then also getting the 1% chance of death but I can't risk it. That being said we're installing a ton of implants in Atali to increase her productivity like this exoskeleton suit is going to increase her manipulation by 25% and movement as well. The brain melder was also installed which is going to basically increase her consciousness by 300%. That's the main use for it I think and then also she doesn't need to rest as much. But then we got like this multi-tool arm that increases global work speed by 25% and the efficiency of the arm by 110. And the thing I like about this is that it's not that expensive. It was only 1200 bucks market value. The rest of these implants are fairly expensive. We're going a bit overboard here. At least it may seem that way and Tali's market value is about to just skyrocket. I don't know if the architect's spine was necessary. It increases the efficiency of her spine by 100%, which I think that is going to help her research speed. The advanced bionic hand definitely will. This thing increases manipulation by 100%. That's going to actually help her research speed by quite a bit. And then these last implants are a bit excessive. We're giving her two Arcotech eyes, which like normally if you ever do use Arcotech eyes, you just want to give them to your shooters because that sight does help their shooting ability. And okay, never mind on that. We only had one Arcotech eye. I'm also using a mod that increases the efficiency of Arcotech body parts because they're normally 150, I think. It's one of the mods I'm using that added more prosthetics. But yeah, the advanced bionic one is basically the old Arcotech efficiency of 150%. Even under the effects of anesthesia, she's still researching, I think, quicker than she was. I'm pretty sure she was like 1300%. But once she wakes up and she has all her manipulation, it's going to be insane. Morden got his first inspiration of this entire playthrough. It's been 30 days now. So that tortured artist trait has not really been paying off too much. He hasn't gone into mental breakdown more than I think twice. There's not a lot of things for us to make right now because we just don't have that much tech. I definitely don't want to make like a legendary duster and sell it off. Like we don't need the money. As you can see, we got tons of dusters just chilling. We're not selling them off right now because Tali is our negotiator. And she's currently unconscious. The item of choice that we're going to make though with our limited technology available is a magical item. I was thinking between while well, this Dreamcatcher Buckskin actually looks pretty good. It lowers incoming damage by 10% and then some other offsets that don't really matter too much and doesn't give that much armor, but it gives more energy, 30% more class XP gain and 25% arcane resist. I do want to make Morden into a Technomancer as well. The item we're currently making is this Wanderer's Cloak, which gives us more options because I believe you can equip this on pretty much anything like over a power armor because it's just a cloak and this thing gives 30% harmony armor, but also increases max energy, lowers ability cooldown and increases the arcane resist. I feel like making a legendary wanderer's cloak would give us more options so I think we're just going to do that. Even though the buck skin could be really good too. Increases that class XP gain by so much. We're also making it out of mana weave which does give a bunch of bonuses. 20% more max mana, 20% more mana regen, less ability cooldown by 20%. Everything 20% actually. I will say this has taken more than quite a while to craft and the reason why is the work speed for this is global work speed. Not tailoring speed like the jacket or other stuff and yeah it's legendary there was like no chance it was not gonna be legendary i think two enchants are lower mental break threshold by six max hp i think only affects the armor itself those enchants actually suck we should probably give it better enchants but it does give quite a bit of armor 31 percent to the neck shoulders and 66 percent harmony armor which i'm not sure if that affects the whole body or just those body parts and then also the mana regen stats i don't think are showing up here but i think it does give more mana regen and those other stats that i talked about with mana weave. We're going to remove those infusions and then from, I believe it's a combat supplier. Oh, and Tali's up and at him. She's under anesthesia, but with only 70% consciousness, her research speed is 4,178%, but that's going to go up by a crazy amount once her anesthesia wears off. So we didn't really have any enchants that were too crazy for the cloak. We just extracted a couple from some dusters we made. This one increases sharp armor by 20% and this one increases global work speed by 10%, which that's really helpful for Morden. Without the cloak on, his general labor speed is 2,574 with the cloak on and I think just from that global work speed increase it's up to 2800 but yeah we finally got that raid we've been waiting for on day 31.2 and the raid's actually pretty small this guy is using an ability on us by the way 
I can't see the range of his ability. The LMG has this range. And they did just load a mortar, by the way. I think we can just have Morden get in here. Yeah, I don't want him to fire a mortar at us. Let's just use the Doomsday. He's going to fire an ability. Okay, we got the Doomsday off. And they're assaulting us now, apparently. Where's Morden at? He got teleported over here. I guess that was one of their abilities. Let's have him try to run. I mean, he has basically a lot of armor. So I don't know if they can actually touch him. By the looks of it, we're gonna have these guys come in and help though. Um, Morden's just a freaking tank, I guess. Like, I don't know. He just doesn't care. But yeah, these guys have a really high point value. They're really geared and they have decent traits, which is why they only sent a few of them. Let's try to knock one of them out. Like, this dude is a caster, actually. Let's get in there. Oh, killed him. Anyone? Janice? Come on, Janice. You know you want to join us? No. On the bright side, these guys did bring us a ton of medigel. Each one of them, I guess, had medigel on them. This stuff is just amazing. Oh, and we actually knocked a couple of them out. This person is actually the one I was looking at. Oh, wow, and she has a couple implants installed in her. A jaw implant. Shocker jaw, actually. This one's really cool. So, with this FSF mod, there's a shocker arm implant that it says it can do an electrical discharge. And apparently it can down people. Person is currently bleeding, though, and they're going to die in nine hours. Then we also got Sophia over here, who does have an advanced construction arm that increases construction speed by 100%. She doesn't really like doing construction though. I don't know why they installed that into her. As far as Sophia, we're just going to remove her advanced construction arm. I kind of want to give that over to Rex because he's our builder, but I don't like the fact that it does melee DPS. I think it's going to lower his overall DPS because yeah, he's using this Arcotech Obliterator for that 820 DPS. And then I think installing another arm implant into him is going to lower it. We're going to try to install the construction arm on Rex and we're going to see how that affects his DPS. First, we're doing a Lionheart installation. Rex actually has two hearts. One of his hearts is an Architect one that lowers bleed, increases healing rate, and the other one increases melee dodge by 10 in efficiency. But yeah, the more you know about Krogan's, I guess. His melee DPS is 408 when he's unconscious, and that's without the construction arm. With the construction arm in his left shoulder, his DPS is 408. And I think once he wakes up, that should end up increasing his DPS because it gives him extra efficiency versus his normal arm. Meanwhile, up here, we're doing some operations on Morden. The reason why we're doing our operations on our fighters right now is because we just got raided and we're not going to get raided for another day or so at least. We already installed a couple implants that increase his range ability, like less aiming time, more shooting accuracy, less cooldown. And this one's an ear implant actually, it increases sight, lowers aiming time, increases shooting accuracy. You can get two ear implants for laser detection and then two eye implants. And then we also did the exoskeleton suit for 25% more manipulation and movement, and then an architect heart. And then we're doing two architect arms as well, which are not only going to help him make clothing quicker, but they're going to help his shooting ability. Do also know when I talk about this stuff, it's all related to my mod pack. If you're playing base vanilla, I don't even know if installing like architect arms will help shooting ability. So we've been getting those implants from exotic goods traders, and I'm kind of on the fence about this play style where you're just constantly calling in exotic goods traders. The only reason why I'm justifying it is because Void's coming on day 50, and we need to be as OP as possible to have a chance against void i think on my next run whenever i do that i'm gonna make it so we have to be self-sufficient and there's no calling in traders or anything like that but yeah we do end up getting a couple more really nice parts and i'll be showing those off in the next episode as well as what text we've been needing to research with tolly's now 14,000 research speed this is how quickly she's researching text now on normal speed so as you can see we definitely don't need another researcher but yeah with that i want to thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one